Thank you for joining us again. Uh, the Yahoo group is working. It's there to help you. Please send any questions either to me or to the Yahoo group if you want a discussion. Like, okay, we had this situation. What do you recommend? Send it to the Yahoo group. And you'll get the input of other people who may have faced the same situation. Because that's the basic idea behind this organization, that the different leaders can share what they've learned with others so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. I do apologize that the film is not online yet. We have to film, but we had some difficulty, and I'm waiting for it to come back so that we can try another way. I think we'll probably get this session online. Inshallah, si Dios quiere, before we get the first one on. Okay. But we'll do our best and I'll send you in. But I thought we'd start with a very, since I'm a former teacher, a very quick review and discussion. Because I'm sure there are questions and situations relating to the forming of a board that you would like to ask. So we'll go to the first slide, which says, Types of nonprofit boards. I remember once I saw a booklet, a beautiful booklet, almost a joke booklet, but not yeah, really, yeah. prepared by the Center for Nonprofit Management on how many different types of boards there were. And one they called a rubber stamp board. And this is where many times the founder has a concept, and she only needs the board to say, that's right, that's good. Okay, it's one type of board. Uh, or to maybe to work for the annual event. But the rest of the function of the board, she can handle. Another type is the founder board. I am the founder, you know. And in order to make it look a little better and have a better publicity, we'll make a board. Or, I am the funder founder, and that's where if someone with money founds a board, then it gets even more complicated. Because you can imagine, they make decisions which might not always be the right decision, but since they're also paid, um, then things get complicated. A fundraising board, there are boards where really your only function is to give money. Uh, an actively involved board, where really they want you to do something. That's more like the DFW International Board, but this, every board is different. The chairman, we didn't talk about how to recruit a chair. So, any ideas? What good experiences have you had? Where do you find these great chairs? And are they really great? Yeah? Well, you look for somebody with some leadership abilities for, for beginners. And in the Centro Argentino, of which Javier is a member, the vice chair knows the year before that he will be the chair. Okay, makes a lot of sense. That's one way to do it. And the other way, you could look for someone with a lot of money, or prestige, or a title, if that's what you want. I know one year we grew our organization significantly because we replaced when his term was up the immigrant leader with a white guy who was a former congressman. And so that, in the eyes of the public, showed that we had a U.S. congressman who'd been there for 15 years who was the head of our war. And that really boosted the prestige and the attention that the organization got. Some other ways you might find a term. Anybody? Any input? A leader with the passion for that sort of work. If he had influence or money, as well as passion, that would be great too. If he comes to meetings sometimes, that's all that you want. Because many times the chairman doesn't bother to show up at the meetings. A person that wants to help. Yes. Servant leader. A service. Service is the is a great word. The, what Javier said was servant leadership. Main responsibility. I felt for years that if the chairman just chaired the meetings and didn't hold any of the board members to what they promised, the organization could never go forward. 
So you need a chair who's going to remember that you promised at the last meeting to do such and such, and in the next meeting, ask for your report. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. These things come up. So in a sense, the chairman is the enforcer. All right, here's a secret that somebody taught me. That if staff works very closely with the chair, staff or the CEO can be given permission by the chair to send out emails. In fact, from the chair, in fact, many times that's the only way you'll get your chair to send any emails or do anything. So, especially, you know, you make a decision in your meeting and the chair will advise everybody of this. You write the email for the chair, you get there, okay, you send it out. That way you're sure that the job gets done. And how to remove a chairman? What if you made a bad choice? Call it security. <laughs> <laughs> we had to remove a chairman once. I, I was told I did it the wrong way. So what's the right way? Well, the, wrong, the right way don't exist. That's it. <laughs> well, I, I think maybe so. I was told certain members of the executive committee should be sent to talk to the chairman and convince him that he should resign. And I understand you had an experience like that recently in your organization, and some people went to the chair of the committee and told him he should resign, and he didn't. But he was no longer the chair because the committee had removed him. But at the same time, in the, the paper of organization, you put a lot of things, if you do it, it's out. Your bylaws really can bylaws. protect you. you yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Advisory board, you know, those are the VIPs. Those are really easy to get because they're just lending their name. But it does help. Board of directors, how do you find directors? I think everything we said about the chairman, looking for people who want to serve, who feel a passion, etc. Training. Some groups require extensive training for new board members. This is the American pattern and it's really a good one. However, how many of you are with groups where you bring come on in, where you really do have, say, a full day or a half a day of training for new board members? Raise your hands if that's the case. One, two. And the rest? And, and we go, you know, because can you get them there? It's hard to get them to meetings, you know, it's harder to get them to train. This is a great idea. Strategic planning committee. At, not necessarily at the same time each year, but when you think it's time to bring your brains together, your movers and shapers and thinkers, your visionaries, and plan for the next year, or for the next two years, or sometimes it can be a three-year plan. You can call <coughs> for this. Just hand invite people who are able to see the bigger picture. This is also a great idea, if you can get it to work. Every organization is totally different, but a fundraising committee, if it works for you, and I can see in many groups, it would work. Go for it. What do you do with members that don't show up? Uh, we have a system. He doesn't come to three meetings, he's out. Yes. That's it. That's not necessarily in your bylaws. That's in the board responsibility form. I sent you one as a sample. That solved a lot of our problems because it meant if somebody hasn't come to three meetings in a row or whatever you determine, he doesn't have time right now, okay? Maybe he'll come back later and want <coughs> to be with you. Sometimes that happens. They ask for another chance. But if it's in the form that they signed, probably without reading it, you can then remove them. Okay? How to remove a member? Yeah. You don't, it's proper to send them a note from the chairman, standard note that you've written. As for our, our agreement, you have missed this many meetings, therefore we will roll you off. Unless, you know, for some reason you'd like to request to remain on the board. Executive committee is very important. What do you do if your executive committee isn't meeting for three and a half weeks and you need to make a decision? 
put in your, your decisions of your executive committee that in an emergency